So this Saturday, or actually Friday for me, we have a good fight between Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou. Now, obviously, this is a fight between a established boxer and an MMA fighter who has had one professional boxing match, or at least one professional boxing match that we all know about, which is against Tyson Fury. Now, obviously, on paper, if you asked me about this fight a while ago, I would say this is a complete mismatch, an embarrassment to the sport, and should not be happening. However, after Francis Ngannou's very impressive effort against Tyson Fury, many people feeling he deserved the victory, and me feeling it was a fight that really could have gone either way. I had it one point for either guy, 95-94 either way. It was a very close fight, definitely could have gone either way. I think a split decision for Fury's fair, but an embarrassment on Fury's end. After that whole saga of the sport, I truly believe that Anthony Joshua versus Francis Ngannou is a really good matchup, and actually... One of the better fights that could have been made for AJ. Now, when you look at his options, when you look at who he was likely going to face, he was supposed to be taking on Deontay Wilder March 8th with Wilder supposedly supposed to get by Joseph Parker. However, Deontay Wilder was not able to keep his end of the bargain, proving me and many people wrong. Joseph Parker got the victory. So obviously a lot of people probably said to themselves, oh, are we going to get Anthony Joshua versus Joseph Parker too? Now personally, even though Joseph Parker obviously has earned his right to a fight against AJ or against another top heavyweight, I did not want to see that. I had zero desire in seeing Joseph Parker take on Anthony Joshua again. I think him versus Zheli Zhang is the exact fight I was asking for, and it's the fight that's getting made, so I'm actually really glad that that's the route that we are going. And with Deontay Wilder not being available, and with Filip Hergovich just not materializing, even though that's probably the main fight I wanted to see next for AJ, I think him versus Francis Ngannou is a really fun matchup. And in this video, I know I went about two minutes just talking about the fight. I'm going to break down how I see the fight playing out, and I'm going to give you specifics. Now, I haven't been making as many prediction videos as of late. I need to do better. I've been extremely busy with school and work. I have very little free time. I'm very rarely even at my house anymore. So I haven't been able to consistently upload for you guys, but I'm going to keep working on it. I'm going to stay as consistent as possible, and hopefully I'll be able to up up the amount of content I give for you guys. So my prediction for this fight. Now, what I see happening in this bout, I see AJ doing what Tyson Fury couldn't early on. I see him actually earning Ngannou's respect immediately. I think within the first round or so, AJ will buzz Ngannou early. I think he will automatically establish dominance on Ngannou in the boxing field and prove right away that there's levels to this. Now, I don't see him stopping Ngannou in the first round. I don't see him dropping him. I don't see him putting him away. But I think in round one, AJ will establish himself and clearly dominate the round. I think as the fight plays on, it will be more competitive in the middle rounds. I think Ngannou will kind of get a little more comfortable in there, kind of... Not necessarily not have respect for AJ's power, but he'll be more comfortable standing with AJ. He's not going to fight defensively. He's going to let his hands go, and he's going to have his moments, and he's going to win some rounds. However, I think that as the fight plays on, AJ is going to take over in those later rounds, and I actually see him getting a, a knockdown in one of the later rounds. I see him getting a knockdown in one of the later rounds, and I see him winning this fight. If it's 10 rounds, I believe it's 10 rounds, correct? I don't know how I couldn't research this before. I apologize for my unprofessionalism. If it's 10 rounds, I see it being 98-91, 97-92 for Anthony Joshua. I'm actually going to search it up right now because I actually heavily apologize for not checking that ahead of time. I see AJ defeating Francis Ngannou by a clear unanimous decision. Now, I don't see it being domination. I don't see him winning every round. I don't see him walking past Ngannou. I respect Ngannou's ability as a fighter enough to know that he will give Anthony Joshua problems and he will make a fight of it. But I genuinely don't see Ngannou being able to make it anywhere near as competitive as he made the Tyson Fury fight. I feel that was possibly a fluke. I mean, anything could happen. Ngannou could prove me wrong and stop AJ and make a statement and completely make me look ridiculous in this prediction. But personally, I see AJ winning a very comfortable, unanimous decision, decision victory. I see him getting a late knockdown in the fight. I see him dropping Ngannou, which Fury couldn't. So it is a 10-rounder, so I was correct. My, I, my initial... My initial thought was correct. I see AJ winning 98-91, to 97-92, unanimous decision win. Ngannou has moments in the middle rounds and maybe even wins a couple rounds here and there. But overall, gets buzzed early and gets dropped late and survives to a decision victory. And I actually think there's a good chance that after AJ drops Ngannou late, he's going to go on the offensive completely and Ngannou will spend the rest of the fight in defense mode and AJ will win a comfortable decision and look much better than Tyson Fury did. You know, I honestly believe truly after seeing how Tyson Fury looked against Ngannou and after seeing how AJ's looked excluding the first Ruiz fight in the two Usyk bouts 
When you ignore that, I really believe that Oleksandr Rusik and Anthony Joshua were always the best two heavyweights. In hindsight, I, ju- I truly believe that AJ would have defeated Tyson Fury. I always picked Fury to beat AJ. I always favored him to get the job done. But after seeing what Joseph Parker was able to do to Deontay Wilder, and I understand Wilder's out of his prime, but after seeing what an out-of-prime Joseph Parker did to an out-of-prime Deontay Wilder, after seeing what Francis Ngannou was able to do in his bout against Tyson Fury, and after seeing how AJ is consistently proving himself to be an elite heavyweight, and after seeing how Alexander Usyk is continuing to establish dominance in the heavyweight division, and let's ignore that body shot slash low blow against Dubois, I know it's going to open up a whole new can of worms that I don't feel like breaking down, but when you look at those factors, it's truly clear in my mind that Usyk and AJ have always been the top two heavyweights. I was wrong in feeling that Fury would defeat AJ. I was wrong in think I was wrong for thinking that Fury had a true chance against Usyk because I really am comfortable in picking Usyk to get the job done, to get the victory. I'm going to go for an AJ unanimous decision victory. Now, Francis Ngannou is going to come to fight. He's going to come to win. He has a good chin. He has really good power, as we know. He dropped Tyson Fury. He's going to come to fight. It's not going to be a mismatch, in my opinion. I don't see AJ stopping Ngannou either, to be honest. If he does, I think it's going to be later in the fight. But AJ is going to prove that he's a better fighter than Fury. He's going to prove that he can defeat Ngannou without... I'm not going to say help from the judges, but I'm going to say help from the judges. I'm not going to say that Fury got a gift against Ngannou because I don't think it was, but he got help from the judges because that was a coin toss. That was truly a coin toss. Freezing for some reason. I don't know if I have to restart the computer after this video. That fight was a coin toss after 10 rounds. It really it really could have gone either way. And honestly, after seeing after seeing how Tyson Fury looked so poor against Ngannou and, and knowing that AJ is going to consistently bring it, I know that AJ is not going to need that type of help from the judges. I know it's not going to be a 50-50 fight after 10, a, a really competitive fight that could truly go either way. No, it's not going to be that type of fight. It's going to be a fight where Ngannou survives. He has some moments in the middle rounds. He gets dropped late. He gets hurt a couple times. And we see the difference between a high-level boxer and a high-level MMA fighter. And Ganu is not a bum. He's not a pushover. He's proven himself to be a respectable boxer. And if he took it a little more cautiously, he could probably build his way up in the sport of boxing and build up a nice little resume for himself. But taking on AJ, as big of a money fight as it is and as smart as it is for him to do, I think it's genius for Ngannou to fight AJ now. I think him turning down this type of fight would be ridiculous. He's going to make life-changing money again, just like he did against Tyson Fury. AJ's going to prove that there are levels, and he's going to do what Tyson Fury should have done, and that's fairly beat Francis Ngannou, comfortably beat Francis Ngannou. To be fair, I did pick Fury to stop Ngannou. I don't think AJ's going to do that well, but I see AJ getting a comfortable victory. That's my final prediction, guys. You guys just let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. It's a really fun fight. It's actually a fight I'm genuinely looking forward to. I'm truly going to be intrigued in watching. It's also a very solid card as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Let me know your predictions. Thanks for, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Have a good one. God bless. I'll see you guys later. Peace.